Hello, this screencast is to demonstrate how to extend the proactive monitoring for power center uh, product uh, to cover an additional scenario uh, for uh, basically monitoring for uh, workflows that are not scheduled but should be. The proactive monitoring solution provides a nice starter kit of rules and services and other artifacts that allow you to uh, monitor a, a power center instance right away. It's basically meant to be a turnkey solution. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't uh, leverage and increase the uh, monitoring capabilities uh, once uh, you, you, know, you start using the product. So uh, this particular scenario, uh, as I previously stated, deals with you know, monitoring for workflows that should be scheduled but are not. So I'll show you how we extend that. Uh, and what we have to first do is a little bit of work in the database, not a lot. But the basic premise of proactive monitoring is that it uses uh, what we call a, a Power Center read only database user. Again, Power Center read only database user, which is a database user uh, that is just a special account that we create uh, for proactive monitoring, which will query the Power Center repository and just uh, have uh, select privileges to various. OPB and rep views and uh, basically what we're going to do is extend the capabilities of that user by adding an extra grant for uh, a, a, a view called rep underscore workflows and then providing a new synonym uh, for the read-only user as well so what we did what I should, what, what was done to make the steps just to show very quickly was uh, just to demonstrate what, what I what was done is that first I log in as the Power Center read only database owner, you know, the name of the owner of the uh, Power Center repository schema. In this case, for this test system, it's GCS user one. You can see that up here. So uh, basically, I just went ahead and ran a grant select and uh, uh, grant select onto rep workflows view to our Power Center read only database user. And again, the, the default name for the Power Center read only database user is PCRs underscore read only. So that was done. I then logged in as the Power Center, uh, you know, did Power Center read only user, uh, PCRs read only again, and created a new synonym for the rep workflows view. Uh, and again, as you can see, we're mapping it to the uh, Power Center DB schema and the view. So that's all we did. We created that and then basically the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the query I built that um, allows you to basically search for uh, workflows that are not scheduled and for those of you who are more familiar with the power center data model you can see that this for this particular uh, view we're looking for where run options not equal to eight uh, which is, means, you know, scheduled repeatedly and, of course, end options not equal to two, which means, you know, run forever. Uh, so basically, we're just looking for anything that is not scheduled to run forever, uh, you know, from the rep, rep underscore workflows view. And you can see I just I ran the query and I actually got a few results back. There's not a lot of test data here, but it does return some results. So basically, um, so that, you know, we proved out that the query works, and what's nice about this uh, project monitoring system is that if you can, you know, figure a way to extract data from Power Center from the Power Center repository, you can ingest that data as events in Rule Point. And Rule Point is the heart of the system. And that's what we're going to go to next. And I'll explain the steps that we're going to do now that we have our query in place and we can actually, you know, pull data into Rule Point using this query. So uh, let's go over there and take a look. So basically, this is the rule point main home screen, and this is just showing you just a very quick dashboard of rules that are fired and you know number of activations, topics, and whatnot. But just to kind of keep things brief, we're going to talk about uh, how we build the various artifacts to create uh, this new monitoring capability. So that's what we're going to do right now. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is create my service. Now services. Uh, do one of three things. They ingest the data, they analyze data, or they provide a response um, due to um, uh, rule conditions firing. 
So what we're going to do here is we're first going to do a new source service. Again, source services, these are the ones that ingest data. And the, sor the type of source service I'm going to pick is the PMPC SQL source. This is the, these, every single one of these type of uh, service uses that PCRS underscore read only user that we were just looking at, you know, the one that we just changed, uh, you know, that we provided the grant select and new synonym for. So anyway, uh, we're going to do new PMPC SQL source. And I have my uh, notes. There go. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to create this source, and you try and always pick a name that makes most you know makes most sense naming something intuitive and now the topic when creating topics topics are very important in rule point they should always be lowercase and with no spaces just much easier for the rule parser to handle that this basically so if you, you know, when you're looking at our events uh, sorry our data from the other screenshot here with the uh, database results and we're getting back four rows in rule point, when this service runs, it's going to return those four rows as four separate events and assign them to this topic. All events that are coming into the system get assigned to a topic. That's a must. That, that's a prerequisite for any event to get evaluated. So again, all incoming events are assigned to a topic, and it can be whatever you want to call it, as long as it's lowercase and it has no spaces in it. You can use underscores. So that's the topic we created for this particular uh, scenario, PC unscheduled workflow data with underscores. Monitor operation, we're going to do um, operations. And now we're going to go back and get our query. And so we have it here. And it, luckily, for, uh, with these types of services, you can set up multi-platform queries. You know, we support Oracle, SQL Server, and uh, DB2. This query is a very simple one. So we can just use the same query for all three platforms. So we'll just paste the same query into each of these fields. Uh, duration is basically the, uh, once the system is once the service is run and returned all event data, that duration counter starts down. It's in seconds. So in this case, we're saying 900 seconds. So that's 15 minutes, which means this thing should run once every 15 minutes. That's all that is. Startup type of automatic, it's just think of it like a Windows service. If you set this to automatic, then the next time the Tomcat server gets restarted, or RootPoint gets restarted, you know, via Tomcat Manager, this service will start automatically, which is what we like. It's usually the desired uh, option, so that's what we leave set. All right, that should be everything. All right, so we're going to create our service. Now, since we created a source service here, I could run this service and uh, basically what's going to happen is it's going to create our topic uh, and properties all automatically. But what I like to do is if I go, you know, right now if I were to go and look at our events screen, we should have three events for that new topic, PC Unscheduled Workflow Data. Let's see if we have them. Yeah, we do. And so basically it's the excuse me, four events. So you can see them showing up here. And you can see we're basically just returning the same data that we saw in that query. We're getting the folder, the repository service name, and workflow name. So we're getting those events in. One thing that I like to do with the topic itself, there's a, a parameter that's pretty important, uh, especially in the world of proactive monitoring for topics. And I'll show that to you right now. First, we're going to find the PC unscheduled workflow data topic, and we're going to edit it. And we're going to change just one field to drop down. And let's see, there's our topic, PC Unscheduled Workflow Data, that was, automatic, that was just automatically created by creating, by, by running that service. But what I want to change here is just this one, this one field, Responder Access. The default is named properties. I always set them to all properties. And the reason why is because if you don't set that to all properties, then what ends up happening is the, um, basically, the properties in the event have to be explicitly named either in the rule conditions or in the response in order to be considered to be used uh, when evaluating the rule and for firing uh, the rule. So by setting it to all, that means you don't have to set all the properties. You know, meaning you don't have to set all the property, you know, property names in the rule itself. You can just pick, you know, to 
write about the rule properties and the conditions that you want to see and then you know use this flag uh, this, this option set to all properties and that saves you some work in your rule writing so I always do that we always set responder access to all properties for topics so we've done that <clears throat> and so basically uh, you can see over here on topic tree now we have our new topic PC unscheduled workflow data now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our rule so that's what we're going to do next So basically, this is our rule here. I'm going to start copying and pasting that information in. So we go to rules, new rule, using advanced mode. And copy and paste the name. Description. And lastly, the actual rule text. Now, we don't have time to really get into this, but this is just a very simple rule that's looking for one event on topic PC unscheduled workflow data with a folder property that is in what we call a watch list. In this case, a watch list can be a, it's a list of anything. In this case, it's a list of power center monitoring folders in the repository. If those, if, you know, these, if that condition is met, then we're going to fire this our, our email response, which is going to send me an email the subject along with the you know workflow and uh, folder name saying that you know they're not it's not scheduled but they should be so please investigate and check it and validate it and it comes back as you know nice clean rule so we're going to save this and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this rule to fire so we're going to go to our service or stop and start it. So basically, that's this service down here, uh, Power Center Unscheduled Workflows Data, the bottom there. I select it, I just have to stop it, start it. So, what we ought to see now, when I look over here at our rule, uh, is that it should have fired. And I'll show you how we can find the rule very easily. Uh, I'm going to turn off all these topics over here in the tree and then just turn on our new topic PC unscheduled workflow data that's again over here and you can see that it has just had three activations over here so that's that's very really good so that's great so you can see that it fired and the reason why it only fired three times is because of the four events only three were in folders that are in that monitored folders watch list so but now what I should be able to check, you know, since my email response did fire, and I should have gotten uh, email alerts, so let's take a look. Hop over there, and there they are, brand new. So basically, you can see, uh, it's a very simple rudimentary alert, but you can set it up to do this, and it just shows you, it's grabbing the workflow name and folder name, and putting that information in. You can see the workflow name here, and then the... Uh, folder name test here. Same thing goes for this one. Workflow name WM test and folder uh, sorry yeah and then the, the folder name is test. Alright so there's that and then this last one you know WF, WFM test relational in folder test relational. This is not scheduled but should be. Uh, so that's basically how that works. And so now basically that rule, that service will run every 15 minutes and check for any uh, workflows that should be scheduled but aren't. And then we can write, look at that rule. That rule will evaluate those events and it will alert us to let us know if there are any that are, you know, rules that are, uh, workflows that are not scheduled. Uh, so let's see if we have time. All right, so what I would like to do, uh, I guess we're running out of time here. Uh, one thing you can also do if you wanted to, just to talk about it quickly, is take this condition out, this watch list. You can make a new watch list of your own and then just provide a name, of, a list of watch lists if you wanted to do that. Uh, but we're not going to get into that, uh, so that covers this particular demonstration, and I hope it's informational. Thank you.